Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and today, we're discussing reconciliation. Are there any good reasons to think that it's a real sacrament? The arguments generally advanced against the sacrament of reconciliation being valid usually come from Protestants, and so are approached from the Protestant method of basing conclusions off of the scripture alone. This whole method of thinking is a self-refuting one, as I outline in the episode on Sola Scriptura, episode 14. So if pressed, one can point this out and thus undermine all the arguments based on this viewpoint. However, I'd say that all the objections that Protestants bring forth against reconciliation as a sacrament can be dealt with in other ways as well. Objection 1. According to Matthew 23.8, 1 Timothy 2.5, and others, we have only one master, who is Jesus. Therefore, it makes no sense to confess to others instead of to him alone. Objection 2. In Mark 2.7, it says that only God can forgive sins. Therefore, the priest can't forgive sins. Objection 3. In Romans 5, 8-10, it says that Jesus saved sinners and gave his blood for them, even while they were sinners, to save them from their sins. Therefore, reconciliation isn't needed for salvation. Objection 4. In 1 John 1, 9, Psalm 32, 5, and others, people confess their sins to the Lord and are forgiven. Therefore, the priest isn't needed. Please note, first off, that none of these objections specifically refutes the decree of Jesus in John 20, 22-23. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. In order for this to be taken as anything less than a decree for the apostles and their successors to exercise Jesus' authority in the forgiving and retaining of sins, some weakness has to be found in this passage, and in others, such as James 5.16, which specifically says to confess your sins to another, and therefore not just to God. These remain good arguments in favor of confession once the authority of the scriptures is accepted. Another thing that most of these objections get wrong is in assuming that God is either not capable of delegating his authority to forgive sins, or else that he simply wouldn't do it that way for whatever reason. I don't think we have any reason to suppose either of those things, and as I said a couple episodes ago, the sacraments are primarily acts of God anyway. God's role in the sacrament isn't diminished just because he happens to work through a human being. This is the important point here. Response to Objection 1 about having only one master, God. Indeed, we do have only one master, but it doesn't follow from that that God doesn't delegate authority anymore. When your boss tells you to obey your team leader at work, and you obey your team leader, you're not adopting a new boss, but actually obeying the one you have. In the same way, when God delegates authority, and we obey that authority, we're obeying God. Likewise, if we refuse to obey the authority that God delegates, we're disobeying God. Response to Objection 2, about only God being able to forgive sins. God does forgive sins in the sacrament of confession, but he does so through the priest, to whom he's delegated his authority in this area. Response to Objection 3, about Jesus saving sinners and therefore reconciliation not being needed. If followed to its natural conclusion, this objection concludes in universalism, the belief that all people are saved regardless of what they may have done, and that's clearly contrary to what Jesus said about people being cast into the hell of fire. When we commit offenses against God, we can clearly suffer eternal damnation for those offenses, and therefore we need some means to get back into a relationship with God. Therefore, reconciliation is needed. Response to Objection 4, about people confessing their sins directly to the Lord and the priest not being needed. Does God need the priest in order to forgive sins? Of course not. God can forgive sins in whatever way he chooses. However, he's promised that the sins forgiven by the apostles and their successors will be forgiven by him as well, and he hasn't made any such promise about individual people confessing to him in the privacy of their hearts. Even the verses cited don't support that view. God can forgive sins in whatever way he pleases, but we cannot. Therefore, for a Protestant to say, it's enough if I confess to him by myself, is presumption. Who are you to decide what's enough in order for God to forgive your sins? Isn't it God's job to decide that? Therefore, we should respect God's decision that reconciliation is needed. 
Next time, what's baptism and how does it work? That's all for now, so keep asking questions and thanks for watching.